Hey everyone, Ethan Vice here with another edition of 4 Hours to Lincoln. I know I've been away for a good minute. Uh, just had a lot going on this week and just have not been able to cover nothing. And uh, so I haven't even got to recap that terrible baseball game against Creighton. That was just trash. I hate to say it, but guys, I told you, this team is struggling right now. I don't know what it is, but it's got to get fixed. Um, so, I don't know what it is. Let's fix it. But on a side note, a more serious note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, something bigger than a baseball game, something that uh, you can get more frustrated about than a basketball or baseball game, excuse me, is uh, Nebraska's own Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers, uh, great voice for the Huskers, awesome man. Uh, he does the sport nightly show every night, almost every night, unless he's calling uh, baseball or football or whatever. But uh, he's been diagnosed with a uh, certain type of cancer. I, I'm not exactly 100% sure what it is. It might be pancreatic. Uh, but he's been diagnosed with it, uh, I want to say, a week ago. But he announced it on his, on the show on Monday. And uh, so, thoughts and prayers with Mr. Greg Sharp and uh, his family uh, through the terrible uh, diagnosis. But, um, yeah, he's, he's one that, uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying he's the only one, but he's kind of one of those that helped inspire me do this show. And, uh, he, you know... He's been doing the. He's been with the Huskers since 2008, and uh, has been on the call for some pretty legendary moments uh, for football and baseball. So, uh, prayers out to him uh, through this difficult time. So, uh, anyway, he, he doesn't like people talking about it a lot, you know, or whatnot. He wants to talk sports, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, Anyway, so I was going to go over some uh, men's basketball, uh, you know, the three recruits they've added this week, uh, women's basketball adding the roster, uh, Jeff Shelley being selected to, but, uh, to Phoenix, Mason McConaughey named Pitcher Week. I was going to go over all of that, but my phone is not charged, and that's what I do my show with. So I'm going to try to make this show quick as possible, and I'm just going to do specifically previews and uh, recaps. So the only thing I got to recap is that baseball game that was against Creighton. And uh, guys, let me tell you, it was just awful. Four runs in the top of the ninth inning. St. Nebraska, 6-4 uh, against Creighton. Lost a series against Creighton. Terrible, terrible stuff. I, I just... Can't say it not. That, that, that is just a dumb, terrible loss. And, you know, I got a lot of people saying, well, Creighton's a good team. Well, they're third in Big East, okay? That, they're not good. They suck. Big East ain't that good, you know? Uh, I, I'd say it's slightly better than Big Ten, but Big East is not that great of a conference. And th this team is has got to get their shit together. Something fierce. Uh, four run uh, I said that okay. Uh, Nebraska scored four runs and six hits, while Creighton totaled six runs on nine hits. Uh, Josh Karen led the Big Red, going two for four at the plate with a double home run and a pair of RBIs. Cole Evans and Tyler Stone drove in the Huskers two other runs, while Clay Bradford doubled. Dylan Carey and Ben Columbus each added a hit. Uh, Caleb Clark went two innings and tied for a career high with four strikeouts in his third start of the season. Kyle, Kyle Froelich allowed a pair of runs before Ty Horn and Tucker Timmerman uh, each turned in a scoreless frame. Casey Dice surrendered a solo home run while Kyle Perry shouldered his first loss of the season. After three scoreless innings, Creighton plated the first run of the night with Teddy Dieters. Uh, when dated solo homer in the left field burn to give the Blue Jays a one and nothing lead in the fourth. 
Uh, the Huskers immediately got the run back in the bottom half with a solo homer of their own. Karen blasted the first pitch over the wall and right with a game-tying 369-foot round tripper, the seventh homer of the season. Uh, Nebraska grabbed a 3-1 lead behind a pair of runs on two hits in the bottom of the sixth. The Huskers had runners on the first and second with no outs, but Carey single and a full count walk to Case Sanderson. Karen broke the 1-1 tie, ripping an RBI double 114 miles per hour off the bat into left center alley to score Carey. Evans doubled the Husker lead with two uh, to two with his Big Ten leading six sack fly of the season after lifting the first pitch down the left field line. Uh, Creighton threatened in the seventh with bases loaded and no outs after two singles and a walk. Dice struck out the second batter he faced to get the first out before retiring the next two Blue Jays via a line out and ground out to prevent Creighton from scoring any runs in the inning. The Blue Jays trimmed the deficit in half in the eighth with Colby Canales' solo homer to left field that made it a 3-2 game. Uh, Back-to-back singles followed by a walk loaded the bases for the visitors in the ninth inning. Ninth fucking inning. For, for fuck's sakes, guys. Like, put, put them away. You had the damn game. I tell you what it is. It's freak out. It's freaking out. You freak out, and then you screw the game. That's what you guys do. This is what's bullshit. You get ranked, and then you take advantage, of, or you don't take advantage of it. You take it for granted, thinking you're king shit on Turn Mountain. Then you go and fuck it up. Very disappointing. You know, they load the bases, then they hit a fucking grand slam. To put us away. Good job. All right. I had to get that out of my system. <laughs> so, all right. So we're moving on. I'm not even going to talk about that damn game anymore. That that was just bullshit. It, and it's not even these midweek games. We lost a series to Rutgers. Who still thinks this team is good? <laughs> you know? You get ranked, and then you screw it up. All right, let's preview Maryland for this god-awful baseball team. Through 18 all-time meetings, the Terrapins hold an 11-7 advantage over the Huskers in the all-time series. And this is me more re- having a few days of blow-off steam about that loss. It's very disappointing, to say the least. Uh, Nebraska went 1-4 and four against Maryland last season after picking up one win in a weekend series in College Park and dropping a pair of games to the Terps in the Big Ten tournament. Somehow, though, McConaughey was named Big Ten Pitcher of the Week. Somehow. Uh, sophomore Mason McConaughey was named the Big Ten Pitcher of the Week. The league office announced Monday afternoon. He moved to 4-2 on the season after shutting out the Big Ten's top offense across seven innings. The sophomore matched his career high with nine strikeouts and worked around six singles, uh, allowing ju- uh, just one Rutgers base runner in each third base, uh, to reach third base, sorry. With the seven sh- shutout innings, McConaughey picked up his uh, second quality start of the season. Also Mark Nebraska's second consecutive weekly accolade after Brett Sears earned recognition the week before. Then uh, Karen, uh, Josh Karen's been named to the Buster Posey Award watch list, and why not? He's one of the few people that actually contribute to this team. Um, uh, he was, well, I say that, but lately... Uh, his catcher skills have not been too nice and allowed runners to advance easily after dropping 15 balls. But is it him or is it the pitchers? You know, I, I don't know. But uh, uh, let's see. It, uh, he's been named to the College Catcher of the Year Award watch list. 
The Greater Air- Wichita Area Sports Commission announced thir- uh, today, uh, actually. Karen is hitting 308 at the plate for the Huskers with eight doubles, a triple, seven home runs, and 40 RBIs. That's probably what's saving his ass is his at bat. Uh, the junior has uh, hits in 15 of his uh, last 16 games and leads Nebraska with a dozen multi-hit performances this season. Karen is one of five catchers nationally this season with a 300-plus batting average and at least 15 extra base hits and 40 RBIs through April 17th. So, got that out of the way. There's baseball for you. Good luck to them this weekend. Just sad. All right, moving on. Let's... We're going to stick with Diamond Sports. Let's talk softball real quick. A team that's actually picking up pace, you know, because somebody's got to carry the state of Nebraska with them, right? So it might as well be softball. Um, They're traveling to Ann Arbor this weekend to take on uh, Michigan Wolverines for a three-game series as it usually works out in a Big Ten schedule. Uh... They enter the weekend in second place in the Big Ten. Good for them. Uh, 11-3 conference record. That's really good. Uh, third in the standings with an 8-3 th- uh, Big Ten record. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Michigan has the 11-3 record. Okay, my bad. My bad. Nebraska has an 8 and 3 conference record while Michigan has an 11 and 3 conference record. So, I was doing a confusal. I didn't think we reached double digit wins yet. All right. Now that we got that cleared up, uh Nebraska is in third in the standings. Same as baseball in the Big 10, but baseball's going to eventually drop the way they're playing. Uh Softball, though, the way they've been playing, the way they played last week, I think they can move up. Who knows? I'll probably eat my words. Maybe I'll feel opposite of each thing in my next video than I do at this present moment. But right now, uh, I think softball's doing better than baseball right now. But we'll see. All right. In addition to trying to improve their conference standing, Michigan and Nebraska are also looking to strengthen strengthen their position for a potential at-large NCAA tournament berth. Uh, Both the Huskers and Wolverines are in the top 50 of the national uh, RPI, and each school has claimed its highest RPI ranking of the season this week. Nebraska's number 48 in the RPI, heading into Friday's game after a season-high ranking of number 43 on Tuesday. Michigan brings a season-high RPI ranking of 50 into this weekend's series. But, you know, to be honest with you, it is at Michigan. So, I wouldn't uh, be surprised we did lose this series. I, I really wouldn't. It seems like not only basketball, but diamond sports or whatever, uh, you're, you're on the road, <laughs> you're going to take losses. That's just what the Big Ten seems to be, you know, in any sport. Uh, so, including this weekend series, Nebraska has three challenging weekend series remaining on its conference schedule. Uh, after taking on second place Michigan this weekend, they will then host league leading Northwestern next weekend. Nebraska then closes the regular season with a three t- game series at Minnesota which is fifth in the Big Ten standings. So not an easy road for softball. I mean, things can slip in a hurry. But, you know, I saw uh, one of the softball coaches talking last night. They're pretty optimistic. They, you know, they at least approach it like it's an opportunity to not only build your RPI, but your Big Ten standings, you know, and they look at big opportunity here, while baseball would be scared shitless of that. That's the difference between these two teams. 
Baseball wants an easy road right now. Softball will take the challenge. I'm being honest. <laughs> Uh, so scouting Michigan real quick. Uh, they won their 30th game of the season Wednesday, defeating in-state rival Michigan State, uh, 5-1. to one. Uh, The Wolverines are now 30-14 and 14 and have won six straight home games. Michigan is in second place in the Big Ten standings with an 11-3 conference record. The Wolverines have swept every Big Ten series, with the exception of Northwestern in the first weekend of April. When they uh, when the first place Wildcats swept Michigan, uh, Nebraska and Michigan share seven common opponents this season in Cal State, Fullerton, Illinois, Long Beach State, Maine, Northern Colorado, Sac State, and UCLA. The Huskers posted a nine and two record against that group, while Michigan went five and four. Um, Michigan is ten and zero at home, as the Wolverines are. One of only 14 teams with a perfect home record in 2024. Dating back to last year, Michigan has won 12 straight home games. So like I said, on the road, it's not going to be easy. Uh, the Wolverine offense have come alive over the second half of the season. In the first 19 games of the season, Michigan averaged only three runs per game. But is the last 26, but in the last 26 games, the Wolverines have averaged six, uh, basically seven runs per game. Michigan is hitting 336 as a team in conference play, the second best batting average in the Big Ten. Defensively, Michigan is allowing 3.2 runs per game while posting a 2.81 team ERA and 968 fielding at percentage. The Wolverines lead the Big Ten with 277 strikeouts and rank second in the conference an ERA and opponent hitting average. So there you have it for softball. Let's move on to men's gymnastics now. Ladies and gentlemen, they are heading to the NCAA qualifiers, and that starts tomorrow. So exciting stuff and a golden opportunity here for these men. Number five right now is where the Nebraska men sit, and they are heading to Columbus, Ohio for what I said, the NCAA qualifiers. Last time out for this team, among the finalists, Taylor Christopoulos highlights the squad after earning a top three finish on two events at the Big Ten Championships, where he garnered a silver medal in the all-around and a bronze medal on high bar. Cooper Giles also made impressive marks after becoming a Big Ten bronze medal uh, medalist on Pommel Horse. Christopoulos was named a first-team All-Big Ten selection, while Giles earned second-team All-Big Ten accolades. Giles was also named a Big Ten Sportsmanship Award honoree. Okay. Notably, six Husker gymnasts highlight the NCAA Top 15 rankings in the nation. Based on a national qualifying average, Christopoulos ranks 5th on floor, 6th on vault, 11th on parallel bars, and 10th on high bar. Uh, let's see. James is 15th on floor. Uh, Giles holds 8th on pommel horse. Cohen is 8th on rings. Titerman is 12th on high bar. And Phillips is in 3rd place in the all-around. 14th on floor and 15th on rings. All right, so ahead of the meet, Nebraska highlights the team rankings in uh, second place on floor and high bar. Nebraska holds third in the nation on rings, uh, fourth place on pommel horse. The Huskers occupy six on vault uh, and eighth on P bars uh, based on a national qualifying average. All right. Um, Let's see. Scouting competition now. Uh, they will compete during session one of the NCAA qualifiers on Friday, uh, which is tomorrow. Everything I'm talking about here, uh, it all starts tomorrow. Okay. Uh, the only things I will not go over is women's tennis and uh, soccer exhibition that is on Saturday. Uh I will, I will cover those later on, however, maybe tomorrow uh, or, or Saturday morning when uh, I recap 
all of Friday's activities. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, the NCAA qualifiers start tomorrow at noon. So we will all probably be at work when that goes on. Uh, they look. The Huskers look to be among the top three teams in the first session to advance to the NCAA Finals. Uh, session one consists of number one, Stanford, number four, Illinois, number eight, California, number nine, Knight, uh, excuse me, number nine, Navy, and number 12, Greenville. Session two is set for 5 p.m. and consists of number two, Oklahoma, number three, Michigan, number six, Ohio State, number 7, Penn State, and number 10, Air Force, and at number 11, Springfield. So that is that. Stanford looks to earn its fifth consecutive national championship. The Cardinal are coming off the NPSF conference title win, finishing with a team score of 422-700, which is freaking high. That That is crazy. A 418 is like an astronomical number and these people put up a 422. That is insane. All right. The top three teams at, and the top three individuals on each event, including the all-around, not on advancing teams, will advance from each qualifying session to the NCAA championship finals. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk women's golf real quick. Uh, Big Ten championships coming up, and uh, that'll be at Maryland, hosted by Maryland this year, uh, and it is the 42nd Women's uh, Big Ten Championship, so uh, they will be part of a loaded field that features all 14 teams ranked among the top 100 in the country. Uh, action on Maryland's number one public golf course since opening in 1998 begins on Friday, April 19th, with tee times of uh, number one, seven thirty a.m. Central, and number ten, eight oh nine a.m. Central. So bright and early for this one. Uh, competition on the Pete Dye designed course continues with the same tee times on Saturday, April twentieth, before the tournament concludes with a final round on Sunday with team tee times off number one uh, and number ten. Um, Number seven, Northwestern, enters the tournament as the top-ranked Big Ten team. Ahead of number 30, Michigan State, number 31, Purdue, number 37, Michigan, number 38, Ohio State, and number 41, uh, Maryland. Among the six conference teams ranked in the top 50 nationally, number 57, Minnesota, number 63, Illinois, number 69, nice, Nebraska, uh, number 70, Wisconsin. Number 75, Indiana. Add five more teams ranked among the top 75, while number 86, Rutgers. Number 91, Iowa. And number 98, Penn State. Round out a strong field. And really, top 100 in college golf is actually really good. I mean, there's a shit ton of golf teams out there. I want to say 300 plus and so to be in the top 100, you know, your top third, that's pretty good. That's actually really good. And, uh, and not to mention we got, a, I don't know, a top 100 individual golfer in the country in Killian Strand. All right. Uh, she leads Nebraska to the Big Ten Championship. The sophomore from Chalice, Idaho, is ranked number 79 nationally, uh, but did not compete in last week's uh, Trees Heisen Buckeye Invitational, uh, as she rested an injury that kept her out of the lineup for the first time in her career. And not to mention, she's a sophomore. So, you know, hopefully uh, we keep her for the additional two years of eligibility. All right. Uh, she owns eight uh, individual top 20 finishes in nine events this season and carries a school record. 70.77 stroke average over 26 rounds this season. She led Nebraska with a tie for 20th with a 223 at the 2023 Big Ten Championship at Fox Chapel Golf Club in Pittsburgh. Strand earned second team all Big Ten honors a year ago as a true freshman. Uh, Lindsey Teal will play out, and uh, not to mention uh, Lindsey Teal's been playing some pretty good golf here lately. Uh, 
but uh, she will play out the number two spot in Nebraska's lineup. Uh, senior from Wahoo, Nebraska, uh, led uh, four Huskers in the top 30 at Ohio State, finishing 28th with a 227. She ranks among uh, second among the Huskers with a 73, 70 stroke average over 20 rounds. She will make her third Big Ten championship lineup appearance, including a tie for 34th last season. So, you know, next year, this team can be really good. I really do believe that. Okay, junior Mew Takahashi, senior Michaela Bavrova, and freshman Arden Lushim all tied for 29th at 228. At the Buckeye Invitational, the trio will occupy the number three, number four, and number five spots at the Big Ten Championship, while junior Lena Hassert rounds out Nebraska's six count four lineup. All right, Bavrova, or excuse me, Bavrova will be making her fourth uh, Big Ten Championship appearance, including a tie for 17th in 2022 and a tie for 33rd in 2021. All right, uh, Takahashi will be making her third trip to the Big Ten Championship, but she battled an illness on the first day of last year's tournament and was unable to complete the first round. She ranks third on the team with a 73-72 stroke average as the only Husker to compete in all 29 rounds this season. All right, uh, so that is that. Uh, moving on to track and field, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they will travel to Waco, Texas for the Michael Johnson Invitational Field event start at 11 a.m. and running events start at 5.30 p.m. On Friday, uh, on Friday, Saturday's action begins at the Clyde Hart Track and Field Stadium at 11 for field events and 1.30 uh, p.m. Central for running events. And uh, we actually have uh, 15 athletes that currently rank inside the top 20 of the NCAA in their respective events. I'm just going to name the names. We got Rima Odebor, Axelina Johansson, Rihanna Phipps, Ashley McElmurray, Aniko Serra, uh, Mine de Clerc, Mirda Kalizic, Emmanuel Cassati, Amelia Flint, Darius Love, Michaela Moore, Terrell Wilson, Nico Schultz, Henry Zimmerman, Kevin Schubert. Uh, you know, I have been naming those names all year long, and they really have not been disappointing. They've been, they're wonderful track athletes. And if I can be totally honest, I think track and field is our strongest sport this year, other than volleyball. It, it's, it's a tie between volleyball and track and field. Uh, they are, uh, Really good sports at Nebraska this year. Okay, moving on. Uh, last thing today, men's tennis going to the uh, Big Ten champion. Or no, sorry, I'm thinking too far ahead. This is their last weekend until the Big Ten championships. They will host number one Ohio State. That you got that right. They are number one in the nation. <laughs> no pressure, right? Uh, Ohio State is 25 and 1 and undefeated in Big Ten. Seven wins, zero losses. You all know how this is going to play out, right? I mean, not, not taking anything away from our tennis team because we're having a really good season. For what it is, for Nebraska tennis, it's a really good season. Let's be honest, you know. Maybe we can get a win out of this. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we also get Penn State on Sunday to close the regular season. Uh, conference uh, matches will be the last for the Big Red prior to the Big Ten tournament starting Thursday, April 25th. So um, let's talk about Ohio State real quick. They come in the final weekend of regular season play with a nearly perfect 25-1 record, undefeated in conference play. In the last season, the Buckeyes finished the season as, an, as NCAA runners-up and ranked at number two with a 34-3 record. They were perfect in conference play, claiming the Big Ten tournament title uh, with a 4-0 win over Michigan in the championship. 
head coach Ty Tucker is in his 25th season in the role for the Buckeyes. He has been named Coach of the Year, Big Ten Coach of the Year 16 times and boasts a career record of 685 and 101, which is an 872 winning percentage. That's impressive. Okay, they have been in that large presence in the ITA national rankings with six doubles duos and six singles players ranked as of April 16th. For singles ranked Buckeyes include number 16, J.J. Tracy, number 17, Cannon Kingsley, number 26, Jack Anthrop, number 28, Justin Boulais, uh, number 112, Robert Cash, and number 121, Alexander Bernard. So, you know, number one team in the country still has guys that are ranked in the 100s. So that's how tennis works. Okay, so for doubles, ranked Buckeyes duos include number three, Robert Cash and J.J. Tracy, number 24, Justin uh, Boulais and Andrew Luchenig. Uh, I don't know. I shouldn't even try. Okay, number 49, Alexander Bernard and J.J. Tracy, number 61, Jack Anthrop and Preston Stearns, number 82, Bryce Nakashima and Robert Cash, and number 89, Justin Boulais and Robert Cash. Um, I did not know a player can be on two doubles teams. That's, uh, or is that a typo? I don't know, but that's what I read. Okay. Moving on. Uh, series history. Uh, Ohio State is 14 and 0 against the Huskers. So... There you go. Their only loss this season was at number 12, Texas, falling 2-5. to five. So, there is that. All right, let's uh, scout Penn State real quick, ladies and gentlemen, and then I will get out of here. Um, they head into their final regular season matches with a 4-18 and record and a conference mark of 0-7. So, completely opposite of what we are dealing with Ohio State, all right? Um, last year, they uh, finished the season unranked with a 15-12 and 12 record. Uh, head coach Jeff Zinn is in his 11th season in a role with Penn State. Zinn has a career uh, coaching record of 524-370 and has achieved four NCAA tournament appearances. Prior to playing uh, the Huskers on Sunday, they will be playing Wisconsin on Friday, which is tomorrow. As of April 16th, number 79, Miko Ela is the only ranked Nittany Lion with a, with a current record of 14-8. and eight. So, series history against Penn State. Uh, since their first matchup in 2014, we have gone 5-7 and seven against the Nittany Lions. I think on Sunday we can make it six and seven. So, what do y'all think? It looks like a pretty bad Penn State squad, but I could also jinx myself. Why not Nebraska be the first, their first win of the season, right? Okay. So, as y'all know, we are coming off a two and zero weekend, um, beating number sixty nine. Nice. Indiana and Purdue. The Big Red defeated the number 69 nice Hoosiers 5-2 uh, and the Boilermakers 5-2. Nebraska currently holds a 15-8 mark in the spring season. 4-3 record in conference play and 10-2 and mark at home. Uh, with the wins, the Huskers improved to 15-8, which is a program best for the last 13 seasons. 15 wins. It's the most for the Big Red since 2011 when the team finished 15 13. Uh, doubles duo Shunya Mariana and Leo Linquit also improved to 9 and 4 in the number 3 spot uh, slot, also holding a 3 and 1 Big Ten record. Mariana improved to 13 and 5 in the spring singles, and Shep reached a 9 and 2 record at number 2 with his win over uh, Pearl Hit uh, on April 16th. Doubles duo Anton Shep and Nick Weidenhorn were ranked nationally by the ITA 
at number 85. Calvin Mueller was ranked at number 119 in singles. Also on April 8, 16th, Nebraska was ranked by ITA at number 58 with a 15-8 and eight re- record early this season. The Huskers claim two straight Big Ten honors. Shep was named Big Ten Player of the Week on January 17th and Calvin Mueller on January 24th. Both Shep and Mueller were recognized for their perfect 4-0 weeks and straight set victories. All right. Um, so, yes, that does cover everything. That covers uh, Friday, at least, as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what time we get done on Friday with everything. So, it'll either be Friday night or Saturday morning that I will have a show for you all. And hopefully a positive one and not starting off with another shitty baseball game. Hope I want to win these baseball games. And this team still has a chance to salvage their season. But they got to start now. They have no time to mess around and, or fuck around and find out. they got to do it now. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am glad I got that off my chest. I hope you are uh, be up. I can't finish my damn quote. I hope you are all being excellent to each other. Go Big Red!